Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Lee. This is what's known as an evergreen webinar. It means that you're going to get the benefit of a webinar that I ran at the end of January 2023 called Be That Confident Presenter. It was 25 minutes long and I've taken out the bits that were at the beginning and anything towards the end where we're talking about Q&A and all that sort of stuff. You're just going to get the best bits of that webinar and I can share with you what you might expect from it. So we're going to talk about how to start small. Because if you want to be a confident presenter and you're feeling nervous, which a lot of people do, then you know don't put yourself in a position where you've got to speak to 100 people first off. I'm going to share with you lots of ways you can start small and build your confidence that way. I will be emphasizing, as you might expect, how important preparation is and how important practice is. And that, you know, for any level of any experience, when you're doing presentations, you need to do that. But particularly if you're feeling a bit nervous about this and you're trying to maybe even avoid doing that presentation. And then right at the end of the webinar, you're going to get five tips from me. Five top tips will help you be that confident presenter. Things that you can easily implement. Okay, so before we do that, I just need to mention a few of the things that I've got on offer should you want some further help with your presentations. So a couple of things you can see on here. The presentation workshop. That's for teams and we can do that online or in person. It's a full-on program and it has lots of follow-up as well. But it means that it's a, it's a great way of giving your team some reinvigoration when it comes to their presentations and their sales pitches. Or if you see below that, let's talk about highly focused specialist skill sessions. Now, these are for 90 minutes. They're online, and we can kind of pick from a menu of subjects that you might want to cover. They could include virtual presenting, things like that. A specialist skill. So there's an email there for me and my website, is trevorjlee.com. So if you go on there, you can pick up all the information you might need about those. And then if you want some one-to-one -one help, well, I do one-to-one -one presentation coaching. And that could be a couple of sessions, maybe short sessions, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 40 minutes, depends what you need. Usually the people who come on those, they're looking to gain that extra confidence in a particular skill, or they've got a key presentation or sales pitch coming up they really want to make sure they do well at. So I can help you work your way through that. And then the final offer is to be your presentation company coach. And we work on the basis that you, you know, we have a we have a set fee per month and then your team can pick and choose when they want to use me. And sometimes that works really well because not everybody in your team will want to put their hand up and say, hey, Trevor, I need some presentation coaching. But with that system, they can, you know, everybody can have the booking link. They can come on and they can book their session and they don't have to tell anybody. Okay? So it might be a way of helping your people develop their presentation skills. Because as I say, not everybody wants to say, hey, I'm not that great at presentations. And don't forget, you know, every Monday I bring out the presentation podcast, Better Presentations, More Sales. We're over 250 episodes. I've been so lucky to have so many fantastic guests on this program who share their experience and their knowledge and their skills. Each episode is fast paced, to the point, And again, it's based on five top tips. So there's some fantastic stuff there. It's available on all the popular podcast apps. Right, let's go over and join the webinar, which started, um, as I say, at the end of January 2023. It's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it. Thanks very much. So welcome, everybody, uh, to Be That Confident Presenter. This is a 25 minute session. And there will be a Q&A opportunity at the end. So at the end of the 25 minutes, um, you, can, you can wander off and go and leave. That'll be great. If you want to stay on and ask any questions, that will be great. And if you put any questions in the Q&A as we go along, I will answer those at the end. So this is the format for today. This is how I'm going to use the 24 and a half minutes I've now got left. So um, first of all, I'm going to share with you uh, just a few thoughts around, you know, the things I get feedback on that stop people thinking they're a confident presenter. I'm then going to share with you three confidence boosters, things that if you do when you're putting, you know, with your presentation, it will undoubtedly help you with your confidence. And then finally, five individual confidence tip things that you can do. And what I would suggest is that you pick and choose the things that you think will work for you. OK, um, and those five tips will be things that you can easily implement without a lot of, uh, of, of hassle or anything like that. So let's crack on. So, um, you know, obviously, when people are you know, about to do a presentation, one of the things that they find is that um, they are they often say to me, well, you know, I'm feeling nervous, Trevor. Well, let's put this into context right at the beginning. If you are feeling nervous, that's not a bad 
thing, okay? I was feeling nervous about four minutes to four when there was nobody here. <laughs> Is anybody actually coming? <laughs> but even now, you know, I've done tons of presentations over many, many years. And if I haven't got that little bit of nerves when, I, when I'm about, you know, in the few minutes before I'm due to start, then, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I want that. I want them because I want that edge. OK, now we've got to get the balance right between feeling so nervous we can't, you know, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a shaking wreck or something, but just having that little bit of edge. So it is a good thing. So, but why do people feel nervous? Why do they think, you know, they, they can't be a confident presenter? Well, over the years, I've kind of, you know, worked with a lot of groups of people and individuals. And some of the things that they often say to me are things like, well, you know, the reason why, Trevor, are as follows. I can't, well, I'm not, I'm not confident because I'm bound to mess up. Well, let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, you are not going to mess up. And if you do, who knows apart from yourself? Okay. Now, we, you know, if you do the things I'm going to share with you today, then there's a very good chance you are not going to mess up. OK, so let's forget that. So get that out of your head. Park that. And then people say to me, well, Trevor, you know, the thing is, I'm, I'll, I'll forget my words. OK. And again, you know, let's park that. Because, again, who's going to know if you forget your words? Only you. Now, I've rehearsed what I'm sharing with you today a couple of times, timed it and all that sort of stuff. And there's a very good chance that something I, rem you know, I said in practice, I won't say today because I'll, you know, it'll have just slipped my mind. But you won't know and it probably won't make any difference to my presentation to you this afternoon. And one thing I would say is, you know, don't aim to be word perfect. Or right? unless you're delivering some sort of political statement that's going to be used word for word, then don't worry about it. Number three, people say to me, well, you know, the thing is, the audience, they're just watching me. They're, they're judging me on how good a presenter I am. No, they're not. OK, what they're looking for you is for some inspiration. You're there because you know your stuff. And that's what their audience are there for. They're not there to catch you out or anything like that. So forget that. The audience are on your side. They want you to do well. And then people say to ridiculous things to me like, well, oh, I am, yeah, the kit's going to all explode and what am I going to do then? <laughs> well, you know, now if we'd have been having this conversation, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, then maybe that would be the case. But kit is pretty reliable these days. <laughs> We've got famous last words as the whole thing goes down here today. But nevertheless, um, you know, it's not going to explode. So forget that. So get rid of that as well. And then, of course, there's the grand one. Well, the thing is, Trevor, I am not an extrovert. And only extroverts are good at public speaking and standing up in, and presenting. Again, no, they're not. That is tr not true. And actually, it's the opposite of true, because I often find that if someone comes along and clearly they're, a, they've got, they're an extrovert in just the way they are, you know, they're, they're kind of full of themselves, you know, a little bit. You know, <laughs> how, how do we judge an extrovert? Often they don't make great presenters. And the reason they don't make great presenters is because they're overconfident. And they don't think they need to prepare or practice. And they think they can just get away with it because they're all so full of themselves. And very often you've seen these people in action when you've, you know, you've witnessed presentations. They're not the greatest people. So all I want you to do to help boost your confidence and think about you as a presenter and what you're going to do is two things. is simply be your authentic self. Don't try and be somebody you're not. So don't watch loads of videos and think, oh, I'm just going to be like that person there when I, when I present. Be yourself. But there is a caveat to that. And that is when you are presenting, I want you to be the best of you. For the time that you're presenting, just be the very best of you for that moment in time. That's all. OK, so it might be five minutes. It might be 10 minutes. That's all there is to it. OK. So it's just being that best of you. And then, of course, you know, let's, you know, let's not forget, you know, believe in yourself. This is not imposter syndrome. If you're not, if you're thinking, no, no, it's not for me because, you know, all these great presenters I'm watching on TED Talks and all that. Well, don't compare yourself with those. OK, just believe in yourself because, you know, lots of stuff that I, as a member of your audience, want to hear from you. And that's why I've come along to listen to your presentation. And if you decide not to present or you avoid it, as we'll see later, then you're not helping me. And that's the most important thing for you to remember. So if you do that presentation, that's great for me, whether, you know, however you're feeling about it. 
Right. Let, I said I would share three confidence boosters with you. So let's get on to those. Right. Here they are. Start small, preparation and practice. OK, now, if you do all of these three things, it will transform the way you feel about presenting and therefore your confidence. OK, and but you've got to keep doing them. OK, and lots of people don't do any of these. So let me explain what I mean. So by starting small, what I mean is do a small presentation to a small audience. OK. And once you because if you know if you're on this call and you've you've never done a presentation or you're continually avoiding trying to do presentations and or you've done some and you really hate it and you think, oh, that was terrible, then, you know, maybe let's start off small. OK, so here's three ways you can start off small. So first of all, do do a little presentation to your colleagues. You may already be doing this without realizing you're actually presenting. But any time you're sharing information with your colleagues, either stood in front of them or at their desk or whatever it might be, in a sense, you're kind of doing a presentation. A great other way of doing a presentation is putting yourself in a non-work environment. So you've got no work pressure, no business pressure. So I'm sure out there all of you are members of clubs or you get involved in things or whatever it might be. And there will be times when you can actually do a short presentation or even just do an introduction or something. And that is presenting. I'm a member of my local running club. And every Wednesday night, there's going to be someone who's going to do two or three minutes of the shout outs, the things that have happened in the last week. That is presenting. There's going to be someone who's going to introduce all the runs. That is presenting. So very often in life, we forget that we're actually putting ourselves in a position where we're doing lots of presenting, if you like, without even thinking of it as presenting. And then, of course, there's a small event as a, you know, a small event. Wherever you happen to be, chances are there are some networking opportunities, networking events going on, you know, where there's only 10 or a dozen people there. But often they're looking for someone to come and share their expertise for 10 minutes. It's a great way of getting your presentations, you know, moving forward and building your confidence. A small, friendly audience, only a short period of time. So to follow those, you know, here's here's the next three things to pick up in terms of that small event. So do this. So don't have any slides. OK, because if you're not, you know, having slides adds to present presentation anxiety. Are they going to work? Have I got the right kit? Is it going to plug in? OK. And the other side of it is most small events, and particularly in if you're presenting to college, you know, you don't necessarily need slides. You know, if you say, oh, I'm doing a little presentation to three of my colleagues. Right. OK, wait a minute. I've just got to get the big screen out and get the, you know, and all that stuff. It's much easier to do a presentation sometimes without slides. And if you are worried about what you're going to, you know, do in your presentation, well, think about telling a story. And I'll share a bit more of that in the, in, in the few minutes time. But. If, if you tell a story, chances are, well, you'll know that story, won't you, clearly, because that's why you're telling it. You'll be passionate about it, probably. You'll be confident in your telling of it because it's something you know closely something about. If you look at TED Talks, often stories play a big part in TED Talks. And it's a great way of being confident when you're presenting. And as you'll see in my five top tips later on, I'll be saying to you, maybe start with a story for the first minute, something that you know about, because once you get that first minute out of the way, you're up and running, you're away. And make sure that if you do do a presentation, you know, a kickoff presentation, keep it to five or 10 minutes. You don't want to be signing up for a 45 minute presentation first off, you know, or, or a gig at Wembley Arena first off. You know, <laughs> So there we go. So that's number one. Right. Number two in this little in this little thing is your preparation. And, you know, I bang on about this. Anybody who listens to, you know, my podcast or has been on my other stuff will know any of these sessions, similar sessions, will know I bang on about preparation. It's so important and it will really add to your confidence because if you've got your preparation done, it will make you feel so much better about things. Less things to worry about means more confidence. So simple things like focus on your audience when you're doing your preparation. Think about what is it, you know, they want to learn from you. And then that will help you build your presentation. It will also mean you think, right, I, I, that's what they want. I can share that with them. That's good for them. And it's kind of good for me. And as I said before, you know, remember that your audience want you to do well. 
So think about that when you're doing your preparation. You, you know, it's all about your audience, really. And a lot of people focus too much on themselves when they're preparing their presentation. And that can add to your kind of anxiety as well. So if you switch that around and think about and focus on your audience, that can make you feel more confident. Because let's face it, you know your stuff. Every single one of you on this call is an expert in some particular area. And if you're sharing that with your pre in your presentation, then, hey, you know, you've got, what have you got to worry about? It's not like you're going to deliver a presentation on a topic you've drawn out of a hat, is it? Five minutes before the off and you know nothing about. So you know your stuff and your audience are there to learn from you. And then if it helps, then think about, you know, and I do this myself, prompt cards. All right, I've presented, I don't know, God, hundreds, I don't know, I've, lot, I've no idea how many times, but a lot. I still use prompt cards. Now, these are postcard size notes. Please don't turn up with your whole thing written out and then have A4 notes and you're kind of reading it. When I work with people and they tend to, tend to do that, the one thing I notice is that when they're actually presenting, they don't look at the notes, the A4 notes. So, uh, you know, so why have them? But if you want a little bit of a safety net, just in case you forget what you, where you're going next, have a prompt card. Here on the next slide is an example of how I have my own prompt cards. This is a live version of something I did in person recently. There you go. So I've numbered it one to 10. Each of those numbers is a slide. And as you can see, I've written one word, maybe a word and a number on each one. And it just reminds me what's coming up next. Now, I don't need the prompt cards when I'm delivering to you now because I've got a screen on my left, which has got my next slide on. And just down here, I've got my iPad with the next 20 slides on. Not, <laughs> don't worry, there aren't that many. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But with, if you're delivering in person, have that little prompt card. And then finally, as part of your preparation to think, right, I'm ready for this. And if you think you're ready for this, you will be more confident. It's just, you know, if there is a Q&A at the end of your presentation, then just think about, you know, what questions would you ask yourself? And then you've got a bit of, you know, you've, you've got no surprises necessarily coming up in the questions. Right. So that's the preparation part. And then we move on to practice. <sighs> you know, it really, you know, I get, <laughs> I get on a bit of a high horse about practice because in business, I think we don't practice enough. We just rock up, you know, or we, or we do loads of stuff in business without even thinking about, or well, should we have a little practice on that? Or should we just go for it? Oh, let's just go for it you know, phone calls, client meetings, whatever it might be. But practice is important. And here's the reason why practice will help your confidence. These things here. Because if you practice, you get a feel for the content. You can check whether it's what you want to share. You get a feel for the flow. And if it flows nicely, you'll feel more confident about delivering it. You'll get the timing right as well. And one of the things that people get very anxious about when they're presenting is they go over time and they get hauled off by the organizer. I'll share a little bit more detail in a second on that. And you also get a feel for your style of presenting because you have to be comfortable with yourself. You know, it is you, your authentic self. And, you know, I, you know, as you noticed, even on here, I'm a bit of an arm waver. You might not be, and that's fine. But you'll get a feel for your style and add all those four things up in your practice and you will feel more confident. But here's a little rule for you. Take your practice seriously. Because if you just think, oh, well, yeah, I'll just have a quick jog through then. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's so great. I'm ready. That's not practice. Practice is going through the whole thing, trying to replicate the conditions and everything that goes with it. And please, you know, don't think about filming yourself. Now, some presentation coaches say, oh, yeah, film yourself and all that. I say no. I never, ever do that with the people I work with. A, because they'll, they'll look at it too de in too much detail. And I say, oh, did I, really, did I really move my shoulder like that? Or did I, is that, is that how I came across? you'll get too obsessed with the way you look on it and then that won't be great for your confidence. But do go through your presentation two or three times. That's all. Don't go through it 12 times and, and, and as I said before, try and be word perfect. That's not great. Two or three times and then you think, right, I'm there. And then save your best rehearsal for the actual real thing. And that tip on timing is this one. Do your presentation 80 to 85% of the time that you have been allocated. So if it's a 10 minute presentation, make sure in practice it's eight to eight and a half minutes. That will help ensure that you don't run out of time and you don't worry about that. And you can feel more confident then because you've got one less thing to worry about. Okay, I promised you I'd wrap this up 
in the next few minutes with five tips to help you become a more confident presenter. And what I would say is pick and choose the ones that work for you. It might be all of them, might be one or two of them. Right, number one is eat. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because when you're delivering a presentation of any sort, you want to be at a certain level of energy. So eating is good, as is having a glass of water handy. Because there might come a time during your presentation when you think, oh, I'm just going too quick. Or you have just had a bit of a brainstorm and you've forgotten where you are. So mm, have a sip of water. No one's going to think anything of it. You've gained yourself a few seconds. You regroup and off you go. Tip number two, wear clothes. Good idea, OK? <laughs> there are some ridiculous presentation coaches out there who say things like, imagine your audience naked. I mean, I found that very bizarre. But anyway, there we go. What I mean by clothes is wear clothes that you are confident in, that you feel good about. Here's, yeah, I'm wearing my um, my webinar shirt today, okay? <laughs> so wear clothes that you feel good about in yourself. Tip number three is arrive early, okay? Because if you arrive early, there's a few things you can do and that will help your confidence reduce the presentation anxiety. First thing is get there early, check everything, you know, check the equipment that you, if you're taking your laptop, this is if you're going somewhere in person, you've got, you know, everything works. And if you're presenting to, you know, you know, they might, you know, find out where you're presenting from and if there's a microphone and how that works and all that sort of stuff. And if you, you know, if you rock up five minutes before the start and you're going, oh, you know, that's going to make you very nervous because, you know, you've got all these things going on and it's going to fluster you and whatever. So give yourself as much time as possible. And if you're delivering online, then do a, you know, a, a setup check. That's a screenshot of, of one I, that's not today's, but one I did probably recently. Just make sure everything's in place. And you can see one of the tips there that for me is that on the right hand side screen, I know it's a little bit blurred, but you'll see I've stuck notes to the screen. And I've got a few stuck here today. Little prompt notes for me of things I need to remember. And then on the left hand screen, I've got all the Q&A and the chat and everything like that. So get that set up. And it's very easy to practice that one as well, because you can just press go and practice without an audience there as well. The other benefit of arriving early is you can meet and greet people who are going to be your audience. And that's always a good thing for confidence because, you you know, they want you to do well. They're not going to say, oh, welcome, Trevor. Oh, you're the bloke who's going to, you know, give us a poor presentation, are you? No one's going to say that. They're looking forward. They're going to say, oh, great, great to have you here, Trevor. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. And they are genuinely. So, you know, and it will make you feel more comfortable if you've done a bit of meeting and greeting. And, of course, you can do it online as well. You know, you can make that happen in your on online way. You can, you know, have a chat beforehand if you need to, all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, finally, in this little, you know, this little tip is also, and you may laugh at this, okay, but have a little warm up, you know. Oh, you know, I find that most people are most nervous in the 10 minutes before their presentation is due to start. So meeting and greeting is a good distraction in that 10 minutes. And then as people start to take their seats, you could maybe just wander off to the side, go out the room, go to the loo, whatever, and then just have a little stretch, you know. And if you're doing it virtually, you can do it without people seeing you and just think, right, I'm ready to go now. Come on, let's get in the, let's get in the zone here. Let's make this happen. Right. Tip number four is start with something you know really well. OK, it takes the pressure off because, you know, you're going to, as I've mentioned earlier, that could be a story. So you've got that one, one and a half minute story that you can tell that's in context with your presentation, obviously. But it's something you're familiar with. And it's a great way of engaging your audience because they all love to listen to a story. So much better than all those presenters who spend the first minute and a half going on about themselves. Hey, this is me and this is how great I am. And these are the awards I've won. And oh, da, da, da. so tell a story. Or if you're more data orientated, maybe use a stat and talk around that stat. I've seen people do that really, really successfully. You know, a piece of data, you know, depend, again, depends on your audience and how you want to engage them and what you feel most comfortable with. Sometimes, you, you know, as I'm doing here, you can start with a prop. OK, this was something I did a couple, I think, I don't know, it must be two or three years ago now, maybe more. But you can see I've got a cricket bat and a cricket ball. And I was kind of uh, suggesting to the audience I was going to hit the ball into the into them and whoever caught it would win a prize kind of thing. And they were getting slightly concerned this was going to happen. But it's kind of set the, you know, set the room. It got engagement. And, you know, for me, it was something I felt com comfortable and confident doing. 
So think about, you, you know, that as a way of starting your presentation, because I can assure you, once you get the first minute out of the way, you'll be away. And the problem you'll have is you'll be enjoying yourself so much. And, you know, you may laugh at this, but when I work with people, this is exactly what I find is that get the first 30, 45, 60 seconds out of the way, and then they just love it. And, you know, and I say, right, you've got 10 minutes and, and they just don't, they want to go on and on. You know? <laughs> so it's a bit like, you know, uh, Edward on the call here, he's a runner. And we know that if you want to go running, the biggest challenge is not when you're out there running, it's actually opening your front door and getting out there in the first place. Right, number five, easy for me to say, but do try and visualize a successful presentation. Okay, now, you know, it's very hard, isn't it? Sometimes that you've got, on, you know, the, St the Professor Steve Wilson uh, chimp paradox. You've got your positive side on one shoulder going, come on, you can do this. And on the other shoulder, you've got the, no, you can't. <laughs> and you've got to kind of get in the middle and battle them. All right. But if you can, you know, think positively and think, right, I am going to make, I do know my stuff. I have done my preparation. I have practiced. And all those things will help you deliver a much more confident presentation. As, of course, will, you know, reminding yourself that you are the expert and that's why your audience is there. So remember, be yourself. As I start to wrap up this, you know, this 25 minutes, just be yourself, not somebody else, your authentic self. But remember to be the best of you. And and this is, you know, you're going to be thinking this might be a big ask at this moment because a lot of people say, oh, I can't wait till I finish my presentation. Well, I'm going to ask you to think a little bit differently to that. I want you to think it's going to be the most enjoyable thing you're going to do this week. OK, because I, you know, for me, I, I love presenting and I've been doing it for a long time. And I know you can sit there and go, well, that's easy for you to say. But if you go out there with a smile on your face and you go out there and you think, right, come on. There, the focus is on me for 10 minutes. I'm going to talk about something I know a lot about. I love talking about it. There's people here who want to listen to me. Fantastic. What a great opportunity. So that's the ultimate goal is to go out there and think, right, I can't wait for this because I'm going to enjoy it. So I've got a sixth, a sixth, if I can say it, top tip for you before we go into the Q&A. And that is this, is that I want you, if you think, if you're on this, you know, if you're hedging your bets and you're thinking, oh, I haven't got a presentation, you know, the one thing I wanted, you know, then go and get yourself a presentation booked, either internally or do something out of work or look for a small networking event that wants to listen to you for 10 minutes or something like that. But it's like anything in life. If you've got a date in the diary where you're going to do something, then you kind of have to work towards it. Because, you know, I've met a lot of people who, you know, try desperately to avoid presenting, you know, and they give out this, you know, oh, yeah, I'd really love to. I'd really love to, Trevor. But the fact is, you know, the dog's in the vets that day and oh, I've got to be there or, you know, I'm sorry, but that day I'm having all my teeth removed or, or you know, or the, or the usual one. Well, you know, if only I wasn't on holiday. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, you know, let's get out there and deliver a great presentation and let's not look for excuses, because remember, in life, remember this is that sometimes it's the things we don't do that we regret. So I hope this has inspired you to think, yes, you can deliver a confident presentation. And, you know, it takes time and it takes practice and it takes preparation, but you will get there. Now, before I go into the Q&A, I just need to remind you.